on top of LT episode 90. This episode is brought to you by stackwap.com. This episode is also brought to you by patreon.com slash blunt blunt talk with lt subscribe become a patron support the brand also subscribe on youtube um we grow and shout out, shout out to my subscribers uh we 2000 deep out here um subscribe to the channel like share comment all that shit um what are we getting into first uh the first thing i'm talking about right now is uh this pc culture shit that's going on and people wanting to be politically correct with everything especially going through these times and it's weird that people want to be politically correct through times where it's just like receive your message understand the message and shut the fuck up type of times because you know it's more serious than it was before it's not like all lax times and people are actually in shambles over the the rona so it's like i don't know this is not the time to be politically correct about everything and all little speeches and people kind of trying to cancel people again in this type of pathetic pussy culture that's like trying to permeate and trying to come back somehow so i'm like nah there's a lot of people being vocal about it, trying to kind of fight back against this uh, random upspring or uproar of political political correctness and shit. Like, nah, we ain't with that. We ain't doing that out here. So, um, yeah, first for first uh, point of topic. So we dead in that. The show's not going to be anything politically correct because that's not what we ever did out here. So, um. If you're looking for that here, that's not a place where that's going to survive. Um, what are we getting into first? Um, okay, so this girl, this um, lesbian girl that slapped up a woman. Um, let me just play the video and then let me update the details of what's going on with this woman. This your mother, right? Are you serious? Stop playing with me. Stop playing you with serious? me. serious? Stop fucking playing Nick, with me, bro. Are you serious? Stop playing with me, that's bro. That's fucked up. Shut the you do this your mother, right? Are you serious? Stop playing with me. All right, so that video went viral recently, or like a month ago, months ago, whatever the fuck that went viral. Um, and, you know, uh, people had various opinions about that. And this girl that was slapping the alleged mother recently turned up dead, shot 15 times. Um, so apparently that wasn't a mother of any, like, it was basically some girl was cheating on her with some girl that she was alleging was her mother. Like, she said that was her mother. That's why she was always spotted with the girl. But really and truly, it was a girl that she was cheating with. So that's why that woman went up to her door and started slapping the shit out of that woman randomly. And it was like, whoa, you're slapping the shit out of a mother? It wasn't really technically the mother of the person that she was coming after. So it was not what it was uh, appeared to be uh, when it was reported. But the point of this story is that this woman's dead now. She got shot 15 times. We don't know why she was shot 15 times, but uh, it's making headlines because, uh, you know, the video went viral. It's fucked up. Um, what else do we got here? Okay, so Leangelo Ball, Lonzo Ball, and LaMelo Ball signed with Rock Nation Sports. Um, there's been a lot of reports about what the Ball family's doing and what type of moves they've been making, but um, this is coming from Rock Nation officially, so this is a legit action. This is not like the bullshit thing with the Puma deals or uh, Lamelo buying the team or none of those fake reports that's been coming out. Like this is solid, stamped in. They they're actually signed with Rock Nation Sports for management, so that's a real thing going on right now. So um, shout out to the Ball family. We we co constantly cover. The Ball family on this show, so shout out to them. Okay, so Kanye West is reportedly a billionaire. New reports came in that he's worth one point three billion dollars. So um shout out to Kanye West. Uh I don't know how much Kim Kardashian's worth. We already know K K Kylie Jenner is pretty much a billionaire. So that whole family that whole family is becoming like billionaires on top of billionaires. So that's that's a they're gonna end up being like the richest family in America. Well, not, like, technically, because obviously you have, like, um, like Jeff Bezos alone will have his family worth more. But, like, you know, like, individually, like, you're going to have individuals all worth X amount of dollars on their, by themselves as their own entity. So, shout out to the Kardashian West family or whatever the fuck they're called. Um, <laughs> West family. I don't know if they care. I don't know what Kanye. I don't know if Kanye is because it's Kim Kardashian West, but I don't know if Kanye is her last name as well i think it's just kanye west i don't know if he took her last name as like a commit like a for i don't know but whatever it is what it is um what else do we got here 
Okay, so uh, Lori Harvey breaks up with Future. Um, a lot of people seen this shit coming. Uh, it was like one of those relationships that had an expiry date. And this didn't seem like it was going to end up being something. Uh, I don't really care about these topics. This is uh, popping up in my gossip news, and people want me to speak about this because I spoke about it when it was first announced that they were together. But um, whatever. Their relationship ran their course. She deleted him off of... Deleted him out of his her life pretty much. Like, deleted him off of IG and all her social media networks. So, it's like, that's one of those official stamps. But um, we've seen this coming. It is what it is. Future's going to continue doing what Future does. Uh, Lori Harvey's going to continue doing what Lori Harvey does. So, it is what it is. Uh, short-lived relationship. Nothing much to add. No PC culture out here. I don't really give a fuck about the relationship. Uh, what else do we got here? Um... Ronda Rousey goes in on the WWE fans. Okay, so Ronda Rousey, when she lost in the UFC and she disappeared forever because she felt like the fans backlash and the way people went in on her because she couldn't handle social media comments. She just really didn't re really recover well from her UFC loss. She came back, fought again, lost again, ended up going to the WWE had a pretty decent run in the WWE, was getting pretty much uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, push and a lot of fame and a lot of star, a lot of that, um, what the fuck am I trying to say right now? If you don't get that bullshit out of my face... She yeah. was pretty much a headliner in the WWE. And for her to just say fuck the WWE because of the fans, because the fans don't support her or whatnot, it's like at the end of the day, there's wrestlers that go through their periods where the, the fans aren't with them, they turn heel, and that's the only way they get that fan engagement, and then they end up being loved by the fans eventually because they put in that work. Like, the WWE is one of those things where it's like, you're not always just going to be loved for just being you. Like, you have to put in that work in the WWE, and for her to just lash out at fans and say, fuck the WWE fans, and... She's departing from the WWE, but she, she has good ties with the business and the, the wrestlers and everybody in the organization. But fuck the fans, ungrateful fans and X, Y, and Z. I'm like, ah, I don't know about those ones. I don't know about calling out the fans and the supporters and the people that pay for the product. That's kind of wild. If you're not loved the way you want to be loved, that's on you. I don't know why people lash out on fans when they're not receiving what the fuck they want to receive. Like. That's on you. Do better. Be more likable. I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, what else do we got here? Okay, so I wanted to talk about this one. Um, Nelly. Nelly was pretty much shooting down ASAP, ASAP Rocky's claim that he repopularized Air Force Ones. And he spoke about, oh, his deal with uh, Nike and Air Force Ones and how they globalized it and blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit trying to get remembered and be in the spotlight. This is one of those times where uh, uh, someone's ego gets in the way of them seeing the truth. Like, Nelly, was, I don't know what the fuck his ego was going through when he made these claims. Because he said repopularize the Air Force, Air Force Ones. He didn't say popularize. He didn't say he made it popping. He was the first one to make it lit. He never said none of that shit. He said he made he repopularized it, especially for the suburban kids and certain different uh, groups of kids that were never, you know, weren't around to really wear it the first time or have that first phase in the early 2000s when Nelly popularized it. Because there's no doubt that the Air Force One song and the anthem, the shit that Nelly did popularized the brand. Everybody obviously fucking knows that. So it's like when he when he's talking to Envy and he's talking to Charlemagne and these guys about it and trying to argue back and forth, it's like he chooses not to hear certain points of the argument because they already said that he made it popular, he made it pop, and nobody ever debated that. He said repopularized it for these kids in 2012 and for these suburban black youths, the suburban white youths, the 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 New York youths, the you know what I mean? Like he was definite he was uh specifically pointing out a demographic and a subset of new generation kids that he repopularized the brand for. And he definitely did. ASAP Rocky had a huge effect on fashion with his whole wave when he first came out. So it's like to deny that it's like you're getting your ego in the way. It's like at the end of the day, it's like give people the respect where it's due. ASAP repopularized it. You popularized it in the first place, Nelly. But at the end of the day, it's like, come on, nigga. It's like people during this quarantine, I feel, well, they, they, well, I know for a fact 
motherfuckers is just jumping out the window whenever they can to get some sort of attention during this time because a lot of artists and a lot of people were living uh, show money to show money, check to check type of shit, and they're getting aggy. Well, Nelly's not one of those people, obviously. He has, he has money, but I'm just saying people want attention right now. People are jumping out the window for attention. They want to be in that spotlight. Everybody's doing it right now. It's gross. It's filthy out here. But, um, like, he damn well knew what he was talking about. That's why when I see that, I'm like, what are you doing, man? These motherfuckers. All right, what else we got here? Um, okay, since I'm on a rant mode, um, Aaron Gordon. Okay. Aaron Gordon disses D-Wade on a new record. And Aaron Gordon's rapping. He has records out there. And I'm like, ah, for me, I'm out. People call me what they want. I guess I'm a hater, but I don't like these fucking these NBA players rapping so much. These niggas is trash. Like if they were good, I'd support it. Like when you hear Damian Lillard, it's like cool, you support it. When you hear Amon Shumpert, because Amon Shumpert's on a whole different wave now, and him perform performing with Tiana Taylor, his wife and shit. It's like Iman Shumpert. I fucks with Iman Shumpert, but for the most part, for the most part, when you hear an NBA rap, an NBA player or an NFL player. They're putting out music now. They want to be a rapper. It's like, nigga, get the fuck on out of here with that bullshit. We know you got the the means to set up a studio. You can get the beats. You get the instrumentals. You can produce stuff. You can get something out there. But do we want to hear that shit? Nah. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, Their bitch. PC attempts to try to be hard and shit. It's like, get the hell out of here. You're going to diss him after giving you a nine and a dunk off. Like, for me, a lot of people felt like he got robbed. But who cares? Is it that serious where you're making diss tracks? I didn't think he got robbed. I, f I felt like Derek Jones Jr. won that dunk, dunk contest, but that's... I felt like uh, Zach Levine won the other one, too, but, you know, that's just me. It could have went either way in both of those, but is it that serious to make a diss track, and do we give a fuck about the diss track to listen to that shit? I'm not here with these, these NBA players and athletes making music. Like, if you're not an artist, stay away from rap. Like, you're disrespecting the art form with your garbage and your bullshit trash. Um, what else we got here? Um... I'm not going to get too much into the French Montana uh, Young Thug beef because they went back and forth. And um, I don't even I don't this is more of jumping out the window and artists kind of just competing for that spotlight because it's like what beef do these niggas really have for them to be going back and forth? Because it's like French Montana said, you know, he he, he made a stupid comment saying that he could compete with Kendrick Lamar hit for hit. French Montana is one of those artists that have a lot of hits. He has a lot of underground hits, a lot of big records, because that's the type of artist he has. He has a lot of club records, a lot of big records, but he can't compete with Kendrick Lamar. That's just in a whole different stratosphere, and he just didn't understand that. But, you know, you can't really hate on an artist for betting on themselves and trying to be better than somebody else. So it is what it is. But Young Thug went in on him, and it's like, whoa, does Young Thug have some prior problems with him? Because he felt like he... He just I felt like he went far with it. And then French Montana French Montana went back and forth. And I have videos here to play, but everybody's seen the videos by now. This is kind of a week old type gossip. But at the end of the day, it's like and then uh Young Thug said something. Like he said he did more for Max B's career than French Montana. I don't know about those ones. Um if we're gonna compare French Montana to Young Thug. And if I'm going to listen to uh, French Montana's album or a, a Young Thug album right now, I'm definitely going to go with Thugger, music-wise. But not to shit on anything French has done throughout his entire career. And I don't think that Thugger did anything more for Max B's career than uh, French Montana. But, you know, there might be some shit behind scenes that I'm not privy to that's not out there in the public. So who knows? But for me, that beef is kind of pointless. I don't feel like it needs to be dragged on for people to try to buff out their chest to actually like, because at the end of the day, nobody has ever backed down Thugger. Nobody has put Thugger in a place where he just completely pussied out or he didn't, you know, he squashed beef. So that's not going to, it's not really going to happen. French Montana recently squashed beef with, um, like this, like when I say beef, like actual problems, he actually had problems with Jib Jones. So they, they, they squashed that shit from years recently. So I don't think something like this can't be squashed over some, you know, petty IG conversations and Internet conversations going back and forth. So it is what it is with that one. Um, what else do we got here? Um, shit. Adam 22. OK, so Adam 22 and Lil House Phone, I'm, I'm pretty much watching their podcast and no jumper podcast. Um. And throughout quarantine, these niggas is just passing back blunts 
back and forth. And then the, what's the girl's name on the podcast? Uh, fuck. Uh, Cam Girl. She pretty much called them out. She's like, what are you guys doing? This quarantine. You guys shouldn't be passing it back and forth and X, Y, and Z. But they continue doing it. Next episode or whatever, they tried to, you know, have separate things. But I'm, like, thinking about that. And I'm like, yo, this is the worst time. Like, when I see niggas in the hood or niggas anywhere just passing back lunch during quarantine, I'm like, what are you niggas doing? Like, it's quarantine season and y'all niggas passing back lunch. You niggas is trying to get shit. Like, I don't understand why people have to share blunts throughout these type of times. It's like, what the hell? I don't even understand it. Y'all niggas got it. Y'all niggas can roll separate blunts. It's not like y'all niggas broken. It's just one fucking one gram left and y'all are sharing shit. It's like, why people... I don't understand that shit. So if you're a random person, I would avoid that. If you're, you know, a podcast listener and you're listening to this, I would avoid sharing blunts with anybody unless it's like your wife or whatever and you're just, you know rolling up a blunt or if it's your husband if you're a woman listening to this or whatnot um i don't know that shit's that's unsanitary during these times i wouldn't recommend it um what else do we got here so this is um this is wild this is weird for me to actually report on this because i was like I, it was just overwhelmingly just out there and i'm like why are so much people going in on our feet but Sin Santana pretty much posted a, a post for Fashion Nova, her Fashion Nova outfit, her wear. She's on a couch. It's this picture right here. But the first thing everybody noticed and everybody went in on is her feet. They're like, I couldn't help notice her feet, her toes, X, Y, and Z. It's like, who really watches feet like that? There's so many foot fetish warriors and weirdos out there that will just look at a picture and zoom in on a woman's feet and go in on the feet like if the feet are your worst feature and that's the worst part it's like you're doing pretty good who the fuck cares about the feet at the end of the day i'm not a foot fetish warrior like some of these fuck boys out here so i don't really give a fuck about the feet like i i make fun of my girl's feet here and there but at the end of the day who the fuck cares about feet who cares about feet you know what i mean fucking weirdos um what else do we got here so french montana actually wrote up his hits for his hit for hit because everybody's competing. Everybody's doing their, you know, their, you know, uh, competitions or IG live battles and shit. And he wanted to put up his hits for his whole French Montana versus Kendrick Lamar shit. And this nigga, he put the same shit twice in his hit column. He put Chopper down and then Chopper down on his list. Here's the list right here. And when I look at this list, it's like, yeah, these are some hits, but these aren't French's biggest hits it might be his biggest charting hits I'm not sure but when it comes to his biggest records that niggas fuck with like that these aren't the top 20 French records and he has one doubled up so maybe he's not aware of his bigger records but these aren't this ain't it right here um what else do we got here in news uh former uh the shy star Jason Mitchell arrested and released in Mississippi on drug and weapons charges. Um, I don't watch The Shy. I've seen Jason Mitchell on an interview on the uh the Breakfast Club one time or something. Um, this is random news for me on my part. I don't really that ain't my field of expertise. Um Yeah, what else do we got here? All right, I'm gonna wrap up the show. We got a quick episode. More coming this week. I gotta be a lot more active this week. Uh Make sure you like, share, subscribe, um, you know, comment on the podcast, like the clips, share the clips. We're trying to grow out here. We're trying to get to that 10,000 subscriber mark. Um, yeah, we out here. Blunt Talk with LT, episode 90. Yep. Yeah.